Welcome to the final episode of our Sentinel Comics series, everyone. We are going to get into some great discussion with Jeff and John from System Mastery this episode. But before we get to that, some announcements. First up, if you want to hear more from us, check out the OneShot Network Secret Archive on the OneShot Patreon at patreon.com slash OneShot Podcast and sign up for the $5 level or higher and get access to all of our bonus content as well as content from other phenomenal shows on the network. Yeah, uh, another way to support us is to go ahead and leave a rating or review for us. Uh, we have links in the show notes to the biggest review platform, so feel free to check those out too if you haven't yet. Uh, other things you can do to help us out is just chat about us online with people. If somebody asks for podcast recommendations, feel free to toss her name out there for them. Uh, and we also love uh, talking to people about the show, so feel free to strike up a conversation with us on Twitter or on our Discord at discord.charactercreationcast.com. You don't have it in the outline because I did not read these before we started recording. Uh, but I do want to remind everybody that Ennie's voting starts next week on the 18th um, and goes through August 27th. I mm -hmm. cannot tell you who to vote for at all. Ryan can make his suggestions if he, if he wants. <laughs> um, I guess the only thing I can say is that I am running to be judge again. Uh, so if you want to vote for me for that, that would be awesome because I had yeah, a lot of fun this year. Um, but there are lots of great games that were nominated this year. Um, so I just really want to strongly encourage everybody to go out there and vote um, mm -hmm. because it, it makes a huge difference to the people that were were nominated. Um, oh, I think absolutely. there's so many people in our community that put in a ton of work on projects this year. Um, and it, it really means a lot if they can win an award, which they mm -hmm. can only do if people vote on it. So um, we'll probably put out a tweet or something about it. But um, yeah, on the 18th through the 27th. Ooh, that's coming up. It's coming up. It's next week. Oh, but, that's Wednesday. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah. yeah. Um, for now, that's all we have. Thank you so much for joining us for the finale of our Sentinel Comics series. Please enjoy the show. Welcome back to our discussion episode. Last time we created our characters for Sentinel Comics the role-playing game. This episode we will be discussing the character creation process. We are very thrilled to welcome back Jeff and John from the System Mastery Podcast. Do you want to introduce yourselves uh, again for everyone at home and tell us a bit about the character you made in our last episode? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm Jeff from the System Mastery Podcast, systemmasterypodcast.com. And the character I made, uh, we ended up naming him The Constant, and he is the uh, only copy of himself in a universe of infinite copies of everybody else. Uh, and he has powers relating to illusion, transmutation, uh, reality manipulation and alteration. And uh, notably, he does not have the power to travel through dimensions. So that part of the story has yet to be told mm. what he's doing here and how he's been to all these other places as well. Also, Tom Hanks. And also, he's Tom Hanks. Uh, that's he's <laughs> not the famous one. He just uses the name Tom Hanks uh, because when he meets new people, it's an instant disarming tool. He'll meet them and say, "Yes, I'm Tom Hanks," and they'll say, "Like the actor," and he'll go, "Yes, like the famous Earth actor." In in his experience, there is always a benevolent famous Tom Hanks in every reality. Mm -hmm. But I like that he says Earth actor, like. Oh, well, that's me mistaking oh, and saying he's an alien. Oh, this, not, I know. I wanted yeah. to be like, this is like, he knows that that's the original real Tom Hanks. <laughs> well, maybe it's that maybe it's that Earth isn't always called Earth. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> uh, John, how about yourself? Uh, I made a character named Chimera, alias Robert Kruger, because they have a cursed glove with claws on it uh when they thought it was just sort of a weird horror movie prop but it had <laughs> actually been a cursed item and it wasn't meant for them uh 
it was supposed to kill off the main actor of this horror movie series that someone oh. hated. And so they had cursed the glove that they were going to put on. But then uh, Chimera is the one who picked it up, put it on while they were on a studio tour, just messing around. They went off by themselves like a loner, a lone wolf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they gained part of the curse. But uh, because they weren't the one that was supposed to be wearing it, it didn't destroy them. It just puts them in this constant state of reality flux. So everything around them is, especially themselves, constantly changing. Uh, and then with some focus, they can cause this reality flux to uh, shift out and change things around them. And, uh, you know, there's nothing for it but to be a hero or a villain if you have a cursed claw glove and reality changing powers. So, I mean, they're just 19 <laughs> mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, might as well. <laughs> and the actor that was supposed to wear that glove, Tom you guessed Hanks. it, Frank Stallone, <laughs> Constance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Ryan, do you want to tell everybody about your character? Yeah, so Which is I mean, probably not a magical girl, right? Probably not. Uh, Aria Felonius is a normal fifteen-year-old uh, high schooler uh, with you know purple eyes and red and purple hair, um, and uh, she yeah, pretty normal. Uh, she just happens to have a connection to some sort of infernal uh, entity of sorts, uh, which allows her to transform into the Crimson Avatar. Um, and, uh, she also sees the future, uh, and has this, uh, ability with the, uh, transformation to have, uh, energy manipulation powers and, uh, power armor, just basically utilizing her, her suit as a weapon itself. Just normal stuff. Just normal teenager stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, she, uh, she has an inner demon that she tries to keep quelled, um, and, uh, that can't be any, uh, problem, uh, you know, at all. Right. No, no, sure it's fine. no way that'll be bad for me. No. Uh, Amelia, how about yourself? Uh, I made Osseus, AKA Bonnie Newman. Um, she is, uh, probably not dead 400 years old. Um, and, uh, has the ability to manipulate darkness and create tiny bone constructs and, um, is definitely not up to anything nefarious or weird or anything definitely. like that. Just, standard just, just trying to help out, you know, just 400 years of trying to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. Through bones. Through bones. Through bones. Yep. Mm -hmm. Better living through bones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, let's go ahead and get into our discussion portion, which Ryan calls D20 for your thoughts. D20 for your thoughts. And I still hate three years later. <laughs> <laughs> this game doesn't uh, even have D20s. I know. It doesn't make any sense. And it only makes sense if you have a very specific accent. <sighs> But it, it's a D20 for your thoughts. Yeah, but if you say and your D20, thoughts are also non-corporeal. Right. Oh, so therefore. It's supposed to be a slant rhyme to Penny. I get it. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. But the rest of us don't talk like that. You could, so. you could copy Savage Worlds and go with a Benny for your thoughts. Mm. But, but that's, that's a way terrible too specific. game. So. That's true. <laughs> In this oh, what can we take from Heroes segment? Unlimited? <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. Uh, we can take a nothing. Mega hero from for it. your thoughts. No. <laughs> <sighs> In this poorly named segment, we will discuss our thoughts about the game. Last time you were both on our show, uh, we covered Heroes Unlimited. Mm -hmm. It was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was fantastic. What is it about superhero games for you guys that, like, those seem to be the ones that you you have gravitated to or at least discussed with us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, whenever I'm playing a role playing game, unless the specifics are very like 
one type of character you play or one type of experience, I'm very much drawn to the whole, like, bigger than life hero type character. I love that. And, I mean, I had mentioned it during the character creation, but I also love having a just a a bit of crunch that superhero games can give you with mm-hmm. like discrete powers and things you do. I love making heroes, combining different things to make a theme. Like it it's just creatively very satisfying to make a superhero for me. Mm-hmm. I find that uh, to be oh, that all rings true for me as well. Uh, I like a lot of upfront fluidity in a character creation engine. Mm. I I like to be able to make whatever the hell I want and have it all come together and make sense and not feel like I need to be constrained by like, for example, I'm not a huge D and D guy because a fighter is a fighter. And if you make a fighter who doesn't look like a fighter, the game is constantly doing what it can to shove you back over into fighter. Mm -hmm. Um, And, and superheroes and there are other engines, of course, that do this as well. But but superheroes tend to really focus in on that. And you'll notice that I've been on here with a couple of superhero games where that is the case. Uh, you don't see me here to talk about like aberrant D20 or something that's still it's superheroes, but it still forces you into little superhero boxes. Mm-hmm. So I like the upfront fluidity. And oh, my gosh, do I ever love, love coming up with a clever na- uh, alias or something that is. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, and you can't do that in a lot of other games. No one can ever be like, well, my barbarian is known as the Thunderclaw. You, people are, people are gonna knock. So, I mean, I guess you could. You, could. you absolutely could. But you yeah, could. No, no one can stop you. <laughs> Become the ruling body. Live you do truth. get some eye rolls doing that, though. Mm-hmm. So uh, what do you two look for in a system as far as character creation goes? Uh, like what pieces need to be there for uh, a great uh, character creation experience? Well, I mean, like we mentioned uh, with the whole fluidity and being able to decide what you want, I think, especially in superhero, but also just in general, I like being able to take kind of disparate pieces of things, take uh, various either abilities or ideas and be able to make something that is uniquely my own. Uh, Mm -hmm. And I love Mm. that. This has, as a game, a lot of ways where you can take, uh, you know, you could have two people that were both the same background and power source and archetype, and you could still play differently with them with different powers. You know, like we mentioned with the whole fighter thing, if there's two fighters, you're going to be very fightery. You're going to be pretty similar. Uh, I like a system that gives me the ability to make something that is mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. I mean, I think that if we had gone through and all made the same choices in this game, we still would have come out differently just because of the way that you skin things and the way, I mean, you know, like even if we had started from the same point and then kind of diverged from there, there still would have been like a decent amount of difference. Whereas, you know, you think you're right in D&D, like I made a fighter and I feel like pretty confident that I've died done all i can do there like mm-hmm. there are obviously a couple of choices you can make as you level up and but i don't feel like i missed out on anything by not making 10 different fighters mm-hmm. i like a character that from the beginning of the game has more than one thing they can do mm-hmm. if, if it's more than one way they can tr- contribute even if it's just more than one trick they know uh because i i like a lot of variety i i uh i don't like making one trick pony characters um And so when I'm looking for character creation, I I like one that gives me a broad range of skills that are still broadly applicable, that that uh, it's not that I have one like, oh, an attack power that I'm going to use every time I attack forever. And then seven other powers that are things like when someone does this extremely obscure thing, you can react with this different, extremely obscure thing. I hate that so much. (laughs) (laughs) That's so much. That tends to be what drives me out of a lot of uh, PBTA games. Not all of them. I like a lot of PBTA games, but a lot of them have this sort of like when a a, a trusted mentor reveals to you that they knew you at a certain age and they liked you at that time, then you can take a string on a third person. And I'm like, this is too, it's not going to come up. Yeah. 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 Or you, you're right where you end up like, you know, I, I played D and D like as a campaign one time and I made a fighter because Mm -hmm. I knew that that was 
the kind of people that I was playing with. And it was like, I hit it with my sword. <laughs> I hit it with my sword. Mm-hmm. I hit it with my sword. I hit it with my sword. There's and solutions after to like that. two sessions, I was over it. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There are absolutely well, solutions later to I got, that. There's... Later I got an axe. So <laughs> that was, <laughs> <laughs> that seemed to be the solution to that. But yeah, that's that's where I'm coming from. I I, I like a lot of uh, broad applicability to my character mm-hmm. from the jump. I don't like to have to wait until I'm eighth level to finally have a character where I'm like, I recognize this character as a character now. It's I, you can build a character. The the thing that a lot of people don't realize about campaign play is that it tends to have endpoints far below the capstones in in game design. Yes. You know, D and D games rarely make it past level eight. So why not yeah. put all the cool stuff there? Yeah. And and mm-hmm. this is a game that puts out all the cool stuff in character creation, and I I, I respect that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you think character creation in this particular game stacks up against other ones that we've done? Heroes Unlimited, for example. <laughs> you know, for example, <laughs> this one still had it was superheroes, and it had a lot of random tables. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I think this is the promise of heroes fulfilled. Mm-hmm. The joy of randomly rolling for things and that experience where you're like oh you know i don't know what i'm gonna get i'm gonna see how this shakes out but instead of it being a hodgepodge of nonsense you're like oh i've got some control here i don't give up all of my you know ability to figure out Mm -hmm. what kind of character i want to play so it just gives you so much freedom and you know you can do it full pick instead of rolling for stuff if you want Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. but i love rolling for things just because i feel like i get the most creativity out of having some restraints Mm -hmm. yeah people will say about this game and I've, i've encountered a few people who have that it does have balance issues that there are certain builds you can do uh for example a cursed elemental manipulator tends to be like just a crazy good combination because everything you do damages someone else and heals you. You will never be hurt. Uh, but mm-hmm. uh, like we mentioned during character creation, that that's fine. That's just that just means that you have a different set of narrative tools that that the game will use to kind of put tension mm-hmm. on you. Yeah. Um, so I like that because Heroes Unlimited is just unbal- imbalanced. There's only one thing to do in Heroes Unlimited, get in fights with other Heroes Unlimited characters. There's not even a bestiary. Oh, yeah. uh, oh man. Here. It's true. Yeah. Here, there's all kinds of things that you could potentially do, different ways you could be threatened. The environment is constantly throwing out challenges that need to be overcome. Oh, no, there's a there's a subway dangle, or car dangling off the tracks, and you have to rescue the civilians before it falls, or mm-hmm. uh, that, kind of, that, that keeps you invested. Even if your character is an invincible brute, you're still challenged and i i like that i think that's a that's a neat and you can see it in character creation because you get through character creation you're like wow my character from the jump can heal themselves mm-hmm. yeah um and, and can do it all the time it's not like it's an encounter power or something i i can heal myself this turn and next turn mm-hmm. um it, but right away you're recognizing that that's because there are other ways that this game will challenge you that's good mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. absolutely and I, I like uh the random generated uh tables in this are not just roll a percentile die mm-hmm. right it's like roll these two or three dice and you've got like three to six options or whatever right yeah for how yeah. those dice can combine and create different uh results on a single table which is really cool and then each of those tables like is you know here's three choices that like so you know you pick your one archetype or background or whatever and then it's like okay pick you know two of these qualities and three of these powers so it's like even once you've made a decision like you still have four or five other decisions to make within that one Mm -hmm. grouping so you know like i said even if we all got the same background or something we would still look totally different after step one yeah. Mm-hmm. What it feels like is that they decided to put some randomness into the guided random process, but only enough to keep it interesting and not enough to keep it purely random. Right. Where Heroes yeah. Unlimited, you can make your character entirely without ever making a choice. Yeah. I think and, the only thing you have to choose sometimes in Heroes is some of the skills. Yeah. But yeah. even well, then, most of that can be random. If you 
uh, choose not to decide. You still have made a choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 90% of our jokes on all of our shows are just lyrics to songs. <laughs> I'll own up to it, too. No, there's a lot of like TV and movie quotes in there, too. <laughs> <laughs> vague Star Wars references. V- very vague. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, how does the process of character creation uh, reinforce the feel of uh, Sentinel Comics uh, and set expectations for play? Uh, it, it, I think it does a lot of that. There's, you'll notice that a lot of the power or the ability choices that you make as you're making your way through character creation are things like you're going to be hindering yourself. You're going to throw out a boost that's going to be to all your allies, but not to you. Um, it, the, the One of the, the structures, because we didn't talk about gameplay, we just talked about character creation. A lot of the structures of Sentinels are based around doing what would be the coolest, passing off the mic to the next person who you think is going to do something awesome in this scenario, basically setting up combo play. Mm-hmm. Um, which is something I always look for in gameplay is a game where my moves inform the moves of the person going after me uh, so I can build on them and not just feel like I'm waiting for my turn. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and a lot of the abilities that you'll see reinforce that uh, with stuff like choose who takes the next turn after the if you let an enemy go next, choose who goes after them or uh, a, any number of other uh, examples that you can find throughout kind of let you know this is a game with a lot of combo interplay. What you do is going to echo down the next couple of turns. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, I think, I mean, like you were saying, the expectation, the fact that you have to pick from a few powers every time that you get a new, like a background in your power source and all that. And it is extremely difficult, probably, I would say, almost impossible to make a character that can only attack. Yeah. Like you are going to have powers that are going to be boosting someone or hindering an enemy or defending someone Mm -hmm. like you, the game wants you to interact with the other players around Mm -hmm. the table, as well as with, you know, the people you're fighting and the environment and everything else. And the fact that it forces you to take powers that will do these things, even if it's just a side effect of like, okay, boost yourself and also attack or attack and hinder the person you attacked. It means you're still playing with those systems. So you don't have like, oh, I made a character and it, I ignore like 70% of what the rules are because I don't do those. Yeah. You, I, <laughs> oh, my character just shoots a laser every turn. You, you, you'll, you'll rarely see that. It's much easier to build a character with no attacks than it is to build a character with all attacks. Yeah, I've definitely accidentally made a character that had no attack abilities. <laughs> Which is nothing wrong with, because we didn't get into it, but uh, well, actually we did. You can always just take a basic action. You could just say, I attack, assemble a die pool, roll it, and take the middle result. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, while you don't have any cool abilities with riders or doing anything different, you can always just attack or just hinder, regardless of what your powers are. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Interesting. One of the things that we like to look at is the layout and the design on character sheets, um, because we like to talk about what the character sheet can tell you about what playing the game is going to be like. Um, when you look at a D&D character sheet and all of your stats are related to, um, you know, like how you attack and like you have, you know, a huge list of weapons and all that kind of stuff. Like it's pretty obvious what kind of things you're going to be doing in that game. What do you, you can, think that these sheets tell us about Sentinel Comics? You can see a little of that here. You'll notice that the character sheet is a two-page sheet, and the first page has no numbers on it. Mm-hmm. Um, outside of things like your age. It, it, it's uh, just a sheet that lets you know who your character is, what they look like. Uh, it, it, you have some characteristics that you can look at for reference, like, oh, yeah, my character has an extra dimensional power source. I should remember that in play and kind of occasionally reference other dimensions or something. It's got your principles, which are sort of alignments and sort of a bunch of other things, but they're not mechanical rules. Oh, yeah. The fact that the principles are so front and centered, they take up the most real estate really on that first page. Mm-hmm. 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 And, and that you contains can, your twists in there. Like, yeah, it, I think that makes a huge difference. Stuff. Mm-hmm. So it really on that first page makes that role playing idea front and center because the twists are basically just role playing things as well. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. 
that being the first thing you come across before you ever get into what die levels, what powers are you shooting off? What are you doing mechanically having that like, who are you as a person as the first thing? Yeah. Yeah. And then once you get to the second page, you can start seeing that real reinforcement of the gyro system. Everything's done up in green, yellow and red. Mm -hmm. Um, which makes it very easy to track, um, especially if you happen to have a color copy of your character sheet. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. But you know what zone you're in and what, asp what what abilities you can use based on what zone you're in, what your health is at, uh, right from a glance. If you're in red, you know you can use the whole sheet. And then the other thing I really like, uh, when you're looking at the, the three columns of dice numbers that you use to assemble pools, those are very fluid. And they're intentionally very fluid. The, the book actually reinforces that. Like it says, if you've got, you know, uh, banter as one of your your uh, qualities, feel free to try and use banter for anything you can come up with, any way you can come up with to, to, uh, to use creativity or conviction or something. They don't. The game is built so that you're not supposed to mind if the players are trying to use their best dice for everything, hmm. uh, because it doesn't matter because in, in most cases you're going to be taking the mid result anyway and you can always roll a one on a d12 yeah oh that's interesting it's it's designed around uh player comfort and if players are yeah. com more comfortable saying well i'm really good at illusions so i want to use illusions all the time that's fine just let it ride and the game is built that way mm. right i think it said somewhere when i was reading it that it's like as long as they're like role playing that and they're like explaining their actions in a way that justifies that that's fine let them mm -hmm. let them use that die every time like yeah. i was saying in in uh, earlier episodes i loved running this game not just playing it but actually running it uh because it's so player friendly as the dm you're you're a lot of games tell you that, oh, as the DM, you should be a fan of the players. You should want them to succeed and help them to, su do, to do cool things. And then the book negatively reinforces that. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, be a fan of your players. But if any of them try to go swimming, make sure they drown. <laughs> <laughs> if they get too cool of a laser, make sure there's a special space tax on that laser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which this game doesn't do that i mean it has the twist system but generally twists are voluntary you you participate you you take a twist in exchange for a success yeah i think mm -hmm. it strongly recommends that like players suggest what twist would make sense in that yeah. scenario too mm -hmm. now so. it's not a, it is by no means is it a perfect game but i, I already have a, a couple of house rules i use for it that i We'll go over at some point if we need to, but uh, it, it very much is uh, player and DM accessible and friendly and a character sheet right away tells you so. Mm -hmm. And I, I like it, as complex as all the different combinations can be in this game. Once you have them on your sheet, it's, it's extremely straightforward mm -hmm. of what what abilities you have, all that sort of stuff. And you don't have to worry about all the stuff that's not on your sheet. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think yeah. that was the most complex part was just like flipping back and forth between the book. And when I've talked to other people about this game, that was kind of the like the only real complaint that we had is just like there's a lot of page flipping when you're looking for things Very in true. the book. But like I said, like I've got my little I'm fidgeting with them here, but my little sticky tabs. And it was like I stuck those on the pages and it was easy enough to go back and find mm -hmm. what for, I for needed. I know that for me, I, I own the book and I love the book, but it is entirely a receptacle for signet for uh, autographs. I use PDFs <laughs> for this. I, I use PDFs for this entirely because there is a really good index PDF out there that oh, you can okay. use for this. Yeah. Oh, very cool. And a very nice form fillable character sheet. Yeah. So, uh, what do we think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation in the system, and what's uh, what's one of the best parts? I mean, we did mention the whole flipping back and forth. That is a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the the fact that, you know, you have just one page that lists everything and then you have to keep going back and forth. But I mean, there's not really, in my opinion, a ton of flaws in the character creation. Uh, I think for the most part. The only time you really, I think, come up against a wall is if you are trying to make a very specific character, mm -hmm. like you have a, a character in mind and you're like, I want to make that. And you go through and picking the like background and 
like archetype and everything else that would go with that character sometimes can mm. lock you out of certain things that you might want to have. Trying mm. to get the right combination to get the qualities that go with yeah. the thing. Yeah. You're like, I can there see are powers difficult. and qualities that I feel are essential to this character, but you know, if I want them, they're like the character I have in mind is definitely a wizard. But if I take the sorcerer archetype, then I don't get access to this thing I want. And, and I have to take like psychic in order to get the thing I really need for that. So there's mm -hmm. there's some uh, roughness as far as having a very specific character in mind. But mm -hmm. I think even then just reskinning you like whatever i take the psychic background or yeah. archetype make it and just call it wizard who cares yeah right. it, it won't right. change anything yeah i, I can a, a, an object example of a problem i've run into with this i i like i mentioned earlier john and i have played this for the one shot rpg and the character i made was a uh, a disco themed superhero named solid gold and uh heck yeah she, she, she oh I had a lot of fun playing her um she had uh, cursed and elemental manipulator as her uh, power source and an archetype because they matched with the character design I wanted to do. I wanted a character who fired light beams everywhere that turned into gold and frosted surfaces so that she could mm. kind of create a dance floor as she as she as she fought. Um, <laughs> but uh, between her her uh, her background and her archetype, the two principles uh, categories that wanted to give me recommended almost nothing that matched the character. Um they just I wanted to make a young kind of exuberant character who who had started her life out uh, testing the waters as being a villain and then saw the light really quickly and became around to being a hero. But uh, none of the, the none of the principles lined up. So I just took other principles from other categories. And because principles are not mechanical, it didn't do it didn't change anything. It was fine. So yeah. the game can take some house ruling and some fluidity on the part of the players and the DMs. Uh, but not so much that it's problematic. It won't actually mess anything up. Yeah, it makes sense. It kind of gives you those uh, those cage areas to kind of play around in, but if you want to get out of that a little bit, uh, there's nothing stopping you from being untethered because there's already things that are unbalanced yeah. as yeah. is. Right. So what's a little bit moving outside of that to to make it a little unbalanced in a different way? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, I would say the biggest flaw about the game in general that, that you're going to hear from people is that the game only does combat, uh, that there really isn't a whole lot of mechanics for non-combat scenarios. I disagree with that. I think one house rule turns the the, the entire combat engine into a non-combat engine. Um, and that house rule is real simple. It's just if you can't think of a power to add to your, your uh, die pool, you can use two qualities. Mm. Whoa. Um, <laughs> get crazy <laughs> i know i know it's nuts if you're like well i i have to research at a library how how are my laser eyes going to help me you could be like fine i'll use creativity and alertness it it won't hurt anything and then everything else can work exactly the same as it always did and you can run non-combat scenes perfectly fine i'm oh pretty my. sure laser eyes would be great at the library but that's fine. <laughs> yeah because you see you've got laser focus yeah, yep. and also they you can you can narrow the beam enough that they're just laser pointers, and then you can you can uh, identify things on a on a page for other people to look at and mm -hmm. play with a cat. Yeah, and you can play with a cat at the same time because <laughs> you have two eyes. Yeah, <laughs> and they can definitely go in different directions. Yeah, I've got a lazy laser eye. A yeah, lazy you know eye. I mean, I'm I guess I don't. I think that, like, honestly, if you're going to go so far as to say somebody has laser eyes, it's really not that much of a stretch to be like, also, they can look in two different directions. Yeah, like, why is that where we draw the line? <laughs> he's my new Heroes Unlimited character. He's a he's a, a he's got a bunch of chameleon in him and he's also got a bunch of cyclops in him and he's cyclomelian. I like it. <laughs> he can look Done. in two directions and fire lasers in both. There you go. <laughs> um. Let's talk about our our fan fiction. Um, if we played this game with these characters, <laughs> what would happen? <laughs> I want to know how how these people all got to be a hero team. Mm -hmm. I like to think that my character. Uh, I, I've been thinking about this for a while because, again, I never gave him any kind of power that would lend itself to teleport, or well, I guess teleportation. And it's he's bad at it, even so. Maybe that's why he keeps jumping through dimensions. But um, <laughs> but. But I like to think that his deal is that he survives, that every that he keeps going to dimensions and they keep collapsing around him and he always finds himself in another one. Um, 
And each time, mm. what and over time, he spent a lot of time trying to hide, trying to fix it himself. Uh, it, but there's some kind of uni- or multiversal event that's following him and his collapsing dimensions. And his most recent thought is, I need a team. That's what that's what'll help me solve this this constant problem that is chasing me. And maybe it'll, he's in his forties. Maybe it takes a long time for the dimensional collapse to happen. So. It, it could be that he's assembled this team thinking, OK, these people will help me stop whatever collapse is threatening this dimension. I can finally stop. That makes sense. I mean, I've been around for a long time. <laughs> mm-hmm. The um, dimension hasn't take, collapsed yet. Right. I did also take postcognition. I don't know if that's really remotely helpful. Oh, but your your whole belt of tools. Are those all from this dimension or from other dimensions? Oh, um, those are all various tools related. To, yeah, now I'm think, rethinking that because originally I thought those were going to be related to dimensional travel and dimensional study. Uh, mm-hmm. But but if if the whole jo- uh, story with this guy is that he doesn't know why he keeps dimensionally hopping, it might be that those aren't actually fitting. Mm. Um, in which case, I would just change my, my D8 quality I wrote for myself, which is called dimensional studies, because maybe he doesn't actually have the wherewithal to do that and probably change his costume around a little bit, too. Mm. Fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But if I like the story that he is the person who constantly builds the dimensional gateways using his transmutation and his teleportation and his cosmic powers, then I could leave all that stuff in and and have it be that he keeps jumping from dimension to dimension, trying to save them and failing. And this is just his latest attempt. Hey, man, do you ever think that uh, opening up a portal to another dimension is tearing open a rift in the dimension you jump to and causing it to collapse no they collapse on while well, i'm on my way out it's fine don't worry about it Everything, everything's <laughs> fine i'm definitely not the villain here <laughs> hi i'm i'm uh i have i have the same name as your beloved star of joe versus the volcano there there is uh a single constant uh between here too uh with all these collapsing dimensions oh, oh yeah i know interesting i'm thing, always though, there yeah <laughs> is that in this in this meta plot isn't this like starting right after a giant cataclysmic event yes and in fact this character would not fit in the current metaverse of sentinel comics Uh, i decided to just not care about that oh see i feel like it could be very interesting for him to come to this one after the event that could be that could very well be and and that could even explain why he's here and why he's on a team uh part of the story of the oblivion event is that the big ultra half galactus half thanos villain that that um was named Oblivion that 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 was the end event for the card game and the beginning event for the role playing game was that he had access to every dimension in all the multiverse and would pull in alternate versions of the heroes they had to fight and uh, alternate villains and all this other stuff. But by defeating him, the the heroes shut down the interdimensional na- nature of the universe. Oh, mm. so um, so right now there's just one dimension in the Sentinels uh, comics role playing game universe, uh, and it could be that my character squeaked in at the last minute and is now stuck here because this universe has closed off the doors to other dimensions. Oh, wild. Yeah, okay. so that. that's certainly possible. I mean, Oblivion could have been just destroying the other dimensions and you kept jumping out of them. It could be. It could be that oh. my character is just the my character is just the uh, chrysalis human form of a new Oblivion. Uh, uh-oh. Any number of <laughs> things are possible. I feel like That's it all hinges time. on you, though. I don't like that that aspect of all this discussion. I I, I don't want to be the star of the of the of the story. Mm. I want to hear everyone else's. It's too late. Mm. No, no. Well, you, you, named your, you named your character Tom Hanks. There's no way that you're not the star. <laughs> Please, my character is a loner. We all know that the loner is the star. Yeah, loners are always the star. Everyone knows <laughs> that. I'm a why loner and a here? lone wolf. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know why I'm here. I'm only here because I have to be. Uh, uh, oh quietly I recruited mean, by me because someone who has reality shaping powers might be able to help me hop dimensions again yeah oh maybe mm. yeah i've got just so much angst as my character which is incidentally why our other angsty character could be i was be gonna here. say speaking of angst yeah. <laughs> i mean you got a you got a high schooler uh that has these infernal uh magical girl powers um and she can see the future a bit as well um and then a college kid that accidentally just keeps shifting everything that gets too close to them so they can never let anyone get too close to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Intimacy issues. Oh, no. What am I, a rogue? In a superhero movie? Specifically one that's, that, that states outright, 
these heroes aren't a metaphor for anything. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh-huh. get too close to me or you'll get hurt. That's not a metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a fact. Just, I'm covered in spikes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't know how all of these go together. I don't I don't feel like how do we. Yeah, because normally it's like pretty obvious, like how our characters just kind of piece together. Okay, but but like, honestly, when you think about it, like how do the X-Men go together either? Other than like, I mean, Professor Xavier, right? Well, let me ask you a question. Why is your character 400? Um, oh, because I'm undead. Okay, so your character is undead and has has seen. Or am I permanently like 30? Oh, okay. But either way, you have seen the breadth of time. Right. I mean, not as much as like a 3,000 year old character, obviously, but, right. but mm-hmm. you're, definitely, you're definitely a nascent immortal. You have seen, you, you think in a, in a world outside of the same linear time that other mortals do. It's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, Commercial breaks case, don't seem that long to me. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a blip. <laughs> so Comparatively. It, it could, it's not that much time. And as I recall, your character, uh, Ryan, is prophetic, can can yeah. catch glimpses of the future. Yep. So so what we, we do see here is a story about uh, time and reality and th- a threat in the future. Mm-hmm. So all of the characters seem to have at least one of those aspects in common. So it could be that they are a, a, a group that that shares. They're, they're almost like a. Uh, like a beacon or a, a warning light or something uh, that that knows that something bad is coming and they have to fi- they don't even know what but they all have to work together to find it out and stop it and they've had the, they've had the same visions for different reasons i i like the thought of uh like my character getting this vision of uh of herself fighting alongside these three other heroes but had never heard of these other heroes before because she's only 15 Mm-hmm. So she has to seek them out, and she finds uh, the first two, the the non constants uh, of the group, and uh, and then it's like, well, there's this third one that like doesn't show up until right after this cataclysmic event happened, right? Because that character doesn't exist. Like the the whole point of the constant is that he's the only version of himself. So even if you had like a tech hero on the team who could simultaneously scan every database on Earth. Uh, the constant wouldn't be there because he hadn't been there yet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I, I, I like the thought of like this team uh, or trying to trying to get this team together, either like uh, organically or or even kind of uh, setting the stage to it appear like an organic get together team mm-hmm. of sorts, and then having that missing piece for like a, a year or two uh, yeah. until the constant shows up. Yeah, that makes perfect. Sense. Yeah. Uh, then I show up and I'm like, when they added uh, Danny DeVito to Always Sunny, all of a sudden the show made sense. <laughs> Just like that. Mm-hmm. In no way dissimilar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, Frank Reynolds amazing. is the constant. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, he'd boy. like to offer you a nice egg in all trying times. I quit. I quit. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I do like the idea that the uh, that there's it could be that the reason that uh, Osseus decided to strive for immortality was a prophecy that they knew that something important would happen, but they mm-hmm. were not going to be alive to see it. And so she and, and so she uh, did everything she could to extend her life and and be there for the event because whatever prophecy told told her that she needed to. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I like it. Prophecy is always a good answer, honestly. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. never never the wrong answer for how did we get here? <laughs> well, we were foretold. Mm-hmm. And then Chimera's there because why wouldn't they be? Yeah. yeah. Chimera's on every team. I'm on every team. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like at the next table over when we all meet at the coffee shop for our, <laughs> our beer. Story. All of you must get together to stop this. Yeah, all right. We didn't mean you. Yeah, I'm in. Quit begging. <laughs> exactly. Well, let's get into our last segment, uh, which is our advancement discussion, and take it up a level. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. 
So in this section, we talk about character advancement, um, how growth works in the system. So let's start with, like, mechanically. How do you, quote unquote, level up in this game? I mean, we said before, you kind of don't. When you make your character, your character is, you're already a superhero. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not really going to add powers or really change all that much. What can change uh, is more the character itself rather than mechanically the character. You oh, do you could like make friends or like do yeah. stuff with other people? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I feel like one of the ways that I would do leveling up in this is... I mean, there's hero points that will go from, you know, uh, your session to session where you can, you know, get a bonus. But that's not really a leveling up thing. Although I do think if you hit something that was narratively satisfying, I think one of the best things you could do would be if you could change your principle. So, you know, if my principle of the loner, my character finally, like, has a found family in... Uh, the new heroes that they are with, then, you know, they could change principle of the loner to principle of the team and really lean into that. Yeah. Uh, but baseline, there really isn't a progression so much in this. Mm. Yeah. The way it works is when you complete a collection, uh, which is a, a, a bit of information. It's like when you finish a, a, a storyline that completes mm. a collection, uh, you write that collection down in the back issues section. Um, and that will allow you to do a couple of minor changes to your character. Hero points, on the other hand, you spend hero points between individual sessions to purchase boosts that you can use during the next session. Mm. Uh, there, there is a section on alternative rewards, uh, other things you could potentially spend hero points on. Um, for example, uh, uh, obtaining a favor from a contact is one of the options. You can spend uh, like three hero points if you have them. And that means in the next adventure, you'll have a, a, a contact help you. And it's in the back of the book somewhere. I think if you do that, you get a that contact has a die pool of a D6, a D8, and a D10. And they can help you in a way by rolling those dice and adding something. You can also purchase temporary powers. Um, and if you purchase temporary powers and decide you like them, like say, for example, during a, a collected trade, your mentor dies, but in dying, they hand you their powerful magic sword mm. for the next session. You can say, all right, I've taken that as a temporary power by spending hero points. So I spent, I don't know, three hero points or something, and I gain a, uh, a, a temporary red ability that reflects the sword. Uh, you can also spend a collection to uh, say, OK, well, I'm going to change my powers. I'm going to take away an old power I had and replace it with this hallmark sword that I got from my dying mentor there. There, there, that way there's character growth, but not character power progression. Okay. So they're not getting more powerful overall. They're kind of just uh, one for one swapping at that point. Yes. Uh, I think the only other thing you can do with the, that you can purchase sidekicks and sidekicks are work exactly like minions. Uh, if you have a Robin on your team, it's just that you have, you spend four hero points for a D eight minion. And before your turn, each turn, your sidekick goes and rolls himself to hinder or boost or help or damage someone, that kind of thing. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So this game doesn't really have a, uh, a, a gain in power advancement. What it has instead is a gain in story advancement where your character changes to match the, the current story. And you'll see that reflected in the card game. Um, the card game works by having a character card that goes out and then a deck that, that they play from, but the character cards, there's alternates. So you can play as like legacy. Who's kind of this universe's core hero. Uh, you can play as like world war two legacy or young legacy, which is his daughter, mm. um, or alternate universe, half evil legacy, that kind of thing. <laughs> so, and for more extreme or weird characters, you'll find more weird variants like their their Captain Cosmic, who's kind of a Green Lantern, has a variant that's extreme 90s Captain Cosmic, where he's all like armored up and his feet aren't drawn. <laughs> um, so you can you can go through using the uh, the advancement tools that are present here to create character variants and play as that for a while instead. That's Maybe your cool. badass, your badass eighties version of your character can't teleport anymore because jumping around is lame, but now he's got spike shoulders. Heck yes. <laughs> yeah. And a skateboard. And a skateboard. <laughs> and a skateboard can talk. Nailed it. Yeah. 
Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, so it does sound like uh, advancement is is entirely narrative mm -hmm. uh, at that point. If you if you even want to call it advancement. Yeah, well, there's mechanical things you can do, but all of them would replace existing stuff in your sheet. There's no way to get more powerful. All you can really do is get is change. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And in, in the cool. end, isn't that what all of us can really do? No. We can just change. We it makes you think. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think you can get more powerful. I mean, I can't. But at what cost? <laughs> at what cost? <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I don't go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's why. <laughs> we'll go with that. That's it. All right. Uh, well, is there anything else that we wanted to to discuss about this game before we uh, close things out uh, for the series? I, well, this game, a lot of it rides or dies on the quality of the gameplay functionality, but I know that's not this show. Uh, but don't worry, because we did a whole hour review on it, too. So if people want the rest. Oh, yeah, we can put that in the show notes. Yeah. Few. yeah, absolutely. About it yeah, there's a there's a lot in this book, and uh, we just scratched the surface in mm -hmm. this series. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't recommend this enough. It's it's really cool. Yeah, it's I'd really gorgeous. love to try playing it at some point. Like this was a lot of fun, and it's like even just reading it was like, oh, this looks like a good game. It's <laughs> killer. For, it's a killer game for one shots too, because the mm -hmm. character advancement system is almost entirely skippable. You don't really need it. And you yeah. can make a character, have a fun adventure and be satisfied. Uh, I keep meaning to run this at conventions and conventions keep not happening. Yeah. It, it really feels though, like you can just create characters by yourself and just throw them in with a group. Yep. Yep. There's cause you can't really cheat. There's nothing stopping you from making your character in advance and just bringing them with you. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is interesting for for a game that has you know this level of detail that you don't have the uh, uh, the built in session zero uh, let's make our group make sense. Uh, yeah. I think that's a it. function of like this genre though is that like superheroes are so varied. Yeah. In general, I mean, like I know that like Ryan, your immediate reaction is going to be like, but in masks you have to. But like I think that's a function of PBTA, not yep. of the superhero genre, you know, I mean, plus, um, you can teenage. cheat here. If you show yeah. up at a convention, your character's got like one D 12 that their archetype wasn't supposed to give them or something, then yeah, you, you could cheat. But like we were saying earlier, big dice in this game don't matter. How big of a difference is that going to make? It's, yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a tiny little variance. And if people need that little bit of cheating to have a good time for whatever reason, eh, have fun. Right. <laughs> right. You got bigger issues than yeah. D12. <laughs> yeah. It, it is pretty cool, though, because it does model that, like, single uh, storyline comics, like, this comics for this one particular character, and here's the team-up comic, which is what we play in the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Which is really cool. And and further enhancing the fake comics uh, that go back 40 years. Now mm -hmm. your character has their own fake comic line. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it. But yeah, the character creation, this is so good. I have a folder with 25 characters in it right now. <laughs> Don't blame you. That was fun. I, I, I keep going through and making characters from other universe, like st IPs, just to see how well they do. So I have like, you know, Squirrel Girl. I have Todoroki from My Hero Academia. I have oh. a Batman. I just, I, I've tried, so I, I made Angel from Angel just to see if he would work. <laughs> yeah, I, I've made characters in this that i had in other rpgs oh, yeah mm. i even have i even have a character from an old mmo i was like oh city of heroes is dead can i make my city of heroes character in sentinels yes oh that's very Ryan, cool i would like you to try to do that with some of your heroes unlimited oh i've got characters. i've got an old folder with all my uh palladium heroes unlimited character sheets um <laughs> i could easily oh, yeah. uh like mishra uh, mr extraordinary would be fantastic <laughs> I'm not I'm I'm not gonna lie to you. I did remake Event Horizon in this game. Oh <laughs> amazing. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh Jeff, John, uh, thank you both so much for joining us to talk about Sentinel Comics. Uh this was so much fun. Hey. I, I keep thinking that we practically work for uh, greater than games because uh, this is like our, our we've done so many shows where we just go out and glow about this. <laughs> I know it's, you guys are definitely where I heard about this game from. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Non-sponsored, but oh, boy. Do we ever <laughs> love this? <laughs> 
Absolutely. Uh, well, can you remind everyone where they can find you online and what sort of other things you're working on? Yeah, sure. You can go ahead, find us, all of our shows. You can find at systemmasterypodcast.com uh, or you can find all of our stuff at patreon.com slash systemmastery. Uh, that'll get you a single RSS feed yeah, for everything if you want to listen to all the shows. And uh, you can find us on Twitter at System Mastery, or if you just want me, you just want John, just my opinions on Blaseball and other dumb garbage, you can go to at Gurgle Spasm, spelled just like it sounds. It's a profile. <laughs> All I do is take easy layup dun- or easy dunks on, on uh, Wa- Watsy. <laughs> Well, thank you both for sitting down with us. This was a lot of fun. And thank you to everyone for tuning in. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I really enjoyed this game. Uh, I'm glad uh, you, Amelia, got something, uh, some good exposure Mm -hmm. uh, to a good traditional uh, superhero RPG. Yes. Uh, You know, as opposed by uh, Heroes Unlimited, Mm -hmm. uh, the greatest uh, game of all time. Nope. Uh, the 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 G goat. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, but it, it, we did cover anyone can wear the mask before, uh, which was phenomenal. Award winning um, game. Award winning game. Award winning game. Anyone can wear the mask. Any award winning game. Anyone can wear the mask. Uh huh. Uh, but that one was a, a bit more at the abstract level uh, uh, for character building. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's nice to have a good comparison now for the genre yeah i mean and we did do masks very very early on in the game but again a powered by the apocalypse game is still very different from this more like quote-unquote traditional yeah superhero rpg Mm -hmm. um and i I did really like the description uh that jeff gave of this being the promise of heroes unlimited (laughs) I, i thought that that was a very good description because i definitely could see some of that like love in there mm-hmm. for that traditional superhero genre but yeah um this was a way better game mm, <laughs> way better even if it's not the greatest game of all time like no Heroes it's the, the greatest greatest I, I game of all time it's, it's so good um, <laughs> <laughs> but with that uh we wrap up our sentinel comics series uh mm-hmm. and before we take a two-week break uh just some quick calls to action uh, remember that you can check out the One Shot Network Patreon at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. If you are a $5 and up backer, you get a qu- access to the secret archive, which will have a lot of extra character creation cast content, um, along with a bunch of stuff from other shows. Um, System Mastery does at least one every month. Um, basically, every show on the network is putting in content roughly every month or so. Mm-hmm. So there's just all kinds of stuff in there. So definitely yeah. uh, check that out if you're able to. Absolutely. Uh, and September 18th is uh, not September. Oh, my goodness. August 18th. Good Lord. What is time anyway? What is time? October 18th. No, gosh. August 18th. (laughs) (laughs) I like that you go further in the future. August 18th through the 27th is Annie's voting. There you go. Strongly encourage you to take a look at the list of nominees that was released on the 13th, Friday the 13th. Um, And uh, hopefully you will like some of that some of the nominees take some time to go vote on those. Um, it means a lot to the creators. Uh, as I said earlier in the opening, I can't tell you who to vote for. If Ryan wants to plug some stuff, he's more than welcome to. Um, mm-hmm. I can say that I'm running for judge again. So if you uh, like the things that we picked, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> you can certainly vote for me again this year. That would be great. I had lots mm-hmm. of fun. Um, but it definitely means a lot to the creators to potentially yeah. be award winning. Mm-hmm. I would say uh, vote for Amelia for judge. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, because Amelia did a fantastic job uh, this year. And it's it, it feels like it's something right up your alley. Yeah. Uh, like your skill set. Just, uh, all right, here we go. This is the Amy from Bu- Brooklyn uh, Nine-Nine just pulling out <laughs> the binders and... Look, I'm not going to say that I bought sticky tabs very specifically to do this job or that I bought an iPad so that I could color code my highlighting as I read each game. Uh, But I'm not going to lie to you and say that I didn't do that. I know. (laughs) Uh, So definitely that. There's also um, a One Shot Network podcast show, uh, Asians Represent, 
is on there. Uh, so that one would be really cool. Um, and then there is uh, Jeff Stormer, another uh, one shot network. Uh, All my fantasy children um, has party of one, uh, the party one podcast um, out there for for best podcast. Uh, so those are two fantastic options. And I don't know how I'm going to choose, uh, but uh, one well, somehow we will. I don't know how you all got it down to five only in all these categories, but uh, yeah, now I we remember we have to as I was reading one. things, being like, "Oh, I didn't think judging would like." I'm very good. I'm very good at judging things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I make a lot of judgments. Um, but man, it's hard. It's ah, mm-hmm. oh, it's rough. It's rough. Yeah. So um, good luck, everyone, uh, yeah. and good luck to everybody that's up for the awards. Uh, this is going to be a, a very fun uh, one to vote for. I think. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully people will find something in there too um, mm-hmm. to try out. So absolutely. Well, before we head out, uh, we do, we actually have a, re- a a review to read. <gasps> a uh, review. I know. Oh, I know. That's exciting. It's, it is exciting. <laughs> uh, this one is from reviewer Ren uh, from the United States of America on iTunes, uh, titled "Good Stuff," uh, and they said. I have bought so many new and old systems because of this show. Good insights. Very entertaining. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I love well, knowing that we can help people find new games, too. Or yeah, old games. Ca- <laughs> yeah. Or old, yeah, we do have some old games on there. Uh, if you bought Heroes Unlimited because of this... I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm sorry, but also, that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, thank you for listening uh, and thank you for the review that that uh, we really appreciate uh, seeing things like that. Absolutely. Um, and if you would like to help us out, others that are listening, uh, leave us a rating review on any of the sites where you can do that for podcasts. If we can find it, we will read it here like we just did for reviewer Ren. Uh, you can also spark up a conversation with us on Twitter or in our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. For now, thank you so much for joining us for this week's episode. It was a really great discussion. We had so much fun. Um, It's always great to talk to Jeff and John. Mm -hmm. Um, But until we are back next time, uh, take care, everyone. Stay safe and keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Now we gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, 
visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Session Zero. Session Zero is a discussion podcast that seeks to explore the psychology of role-playing. Each episode will feature RP concepts, stories, and tropes viewed through the lens of psychology by clinical psychologist Porter Green and industrial organizational psychologist Steve Discount. Join us on the couch for the next session. I did it. Me too. Fabulous. Waveforms. Awesome. Everybody loves a yes. good waveform. And they're not even bumpy this time. <laughs> not even bumpy. Yeah, not your fan's not on. I know. It's a little cooler, right? Yeah, I have the air conditioning on now. Oh, that makes sense. It's like a bajillion degrees outside. Mm. And by a bajillion, I mean like, I don't know, 90. <laughs> too many. It's too many. Too many degrees. <laughs> too many degrees. Oh, all language. That's right. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> all language. With uh, Audacity's. Recording levels. Oh, you can change it. Zoom. Oh, yeah, really? Uh, if you go to the mute option, uh, the up arrow next to the mute button in Zoom, and go to audio settings, right. there is a automatically adjust microphone volume, which is turned on by default. Hold on. Where is that button? What's going on here? Uh, you hover over the Zoom window. You oh, go to zoom the window. Yeah, and you go to the uh, mute icon in the lower left. There's a little up arrow. Mm-hmm. You click on that, and you go to audio settings. Yep. And then right on that page, right in the middle under microphone, mm -hmm. there's a automatically adjust microphone volume. Uncheck that, and your problems will be solved. Oh, thank you. Oh, language. Yay. <laughs> so many solved problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it's because we started with a larger than normal number of problems, but we can... We can all feel good about the number of problems we've solved today. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Got 99 problems, but Zoom's still one of them. Put my all recording right. volume back to a normal level. Hooray. And uh, uh, John, before we get started, would you like a drink? Sure. All right. So I'm going to take one second to run off and grab a couple of drinks and then, then we'll be good to go. Perfect. Awesome. Mm. To decide if I should leave the dog out or put her away. But she's sleeping right now, so That's I think fine. I'm just going to leave her. Oh, sleepy baby. Sleepy Tired. baby. She's like curled up into like a little a little dog donut back there. Little dog nut. Well, like little <laughs> dog donut. I love when they do that. Mm-hmm. But as soon as she sees somebody outside, she'll start barking out the window. How can she see somebody if she's asleep? Too shy. <laughs> Okay, I'm back. Okay. Hello. Thank you for the audio confirmation. Since we can only see John. Oh, yeah. I mean, I left the Zoom meeting, so I can't come in there and turn on, on my camera so you can see me. But trust me, I'm here. I mean, okay. theoretically, we could we could pull you up in the Discord and uh, turn on your camera there. Uh, but that just seems like way too much work. Let's not yeah. do any more work. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much. It's too much. There, if you have Discord open, my camera's on. You can see me over here looking boring. Okay. I think I'm there. Oh, hey, I see it. Whoa. Wonderful. Crazy. Now let me put on my old man glasses. <laughs> oh, actually. Oh, language. Okay, hang on. I gotta go get mine. I had them on before, and then I took them off. I don't have any over here. All this all this uh, pre pre-recording swearing. <laughs> gotta get it out of the system. Yeah, I should write a little sticky note and don't put it swear. Uh, that says don't swear. <laughs> Just a little sticky note that our, says don't our language. And swear. Our show is incredibly profane and it's uh -huh. hard for us to, to stick to the rules. <laughs> How long have we, we been making this show? It's still hard for me. Like <laughs> three years, three and a half years. Yeah, it's, it's been over three years uh, of actual recordings. I try really hard not to, but. What are we coming up on? August is our thing, right? Is it nine? Yeah, I think. Good August lord, should be nine. That's a long time. It's a it's a ways. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah. And you're still friends? I don't know about that. Well, if anything, we're still it's recording. made us closer friends. <laughs> oh wait, that's because you have to record in the same room. <laughs> Those are very different answers there, and I'm concerned. <laughs> well, we're coworkers and business partners now. We have an LLC, and we're, our names are on books. Ooh. Ooh. 
we're fancy. I know. You can tell. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I just covered up Amelia's uh, non-pictured uh, camera on Zoom with a Discord window. So now I got everybody on one screen. Nice. Ooh. All right. Although, uh, Jeff, you're really tiny, but that's okay. Because Discord's interface I mean, that, is garbage. That's always been a dream of mine anyways, to just be really, really <laughs> tiny. So I can do so I can do cool heists. There you go. Well, maybe uh, when we make characters in this game, we could do that. Look at that segue. <laughs> Let's go ahead. <laughs> Let's start. Yeah, sure. All right. Uh, I'll give us a five count of uh, background noise silence, and then we'll go ahead and uh, start the episode. Here we go. Sorry. It's like my mouse is doing that thing where it's like you can scroll down none or all the way to the bottom. <sighs> Stupid mouse. <laughs> I'm going to take like two minutes here. The dog has to go out. She's going to keep barking at me until <laughs> I let her. Okay. I'll uh, be right back. Do we want to take a quick break then? Uh, keep sure our thing. recordings rolling. And sure. uh, if, we, if we need to stretch. Sure. Cool. I'll be right back. Good timing. Welcome back. Hello, hello. Thank you. I'm going to try and find a pair of glasses that don't like squeeze my head with my headphones on. <laughs> Like the first ones I grabbed just are giving me like the worst headache from. Oh, sounds gross. You need a podcasting pince nez. <laughs> I got like I don't know, five pairs here. So I don't see why they don't make uh, glasses that have extra wide loops just for giant headphones. I mean, they probably do. It's just if you go see anybody like who is a remotely good optician, they're not going to like let you pick glasses that are that big. <laughs> I have a hard enough time finding glasses for my big oh. oh, You should just get the Morpheus ones where it's just no. Oh, just on your nose? And it's just on your nose. Dan has like a what, bucket head. Yeah. <laughs> and he like always has that problem of finding glasses that fit his giant head. And actually, he was trying some on Nate yesterday when Nate went for his eye appointment. And he's like, this kid has a mm. big head. And I was like, yeah, he gets it from you. Like, it's a reason hats yeah, don't I have a colossal nose so I need really wide bridges oh yeah mm. and he tried to talk me into buying but, another pair yesterday and I was like I have 13 pairs of glasses I don't need another pair of glasses <laughs> I don't even use my prescription ones these are just off the shelf readers yeah mine are like they're my prescription is so small but it's just enough that like if I don't wear them I'll have a headache by the end of the day mm. right all right. Clicky. Clicky clack. And we usually go, go clicky. Back. I'm like, click E. Well, yeah, do it. Yeah, click E. No, no, not click E. Click E. Click E. Because if you click E, then I don't know what happens in Audacity. Oh, okay. You're right. Well, <laughs> usually, I think most of them are like mapped to be like control something or like unless you go in and remap them. Mm, I don't think just be, E does anything. You'd be surprised. I, don't I know, guess. I'm going through because just X is play, stop, and set cursor. Uh, oh, interesting. Because I remapped mine so that X is cut. Oh, fancy, fancy. Because then it was easier to just like. Oh. No. Come on, Peggy. We're trying to record here. Like Peggy can hear me through your headphones. What do you have? Are you serious? That's a brand new dragon baby. What are you doing? She got the squeaker from the inside of it. <laughs> and now the squeaker's on the outside. <laughs> and now she's freaking out at me because I'm squeaking it. <laughs> Squeaky baby. Okay. All right. Enjoy that. No, outtakes. get off of me. Get off of me. Here, play with this. Professionals. Professionals. She knows I have it on my desk now. She's gonna like stare me down until. Okay. Hi, Quinn. All right. Hey. Hey, are you gonna be, are you gonna be quiet in here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. I'm gonna. It can't be any worse than what I've got. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna read some stuff with uh, with Amelia. You can sit and watch. Okay. <laughs> There's like not even anything to watch today. I know nothing to watch except for Daddy. Can I say no. hi? 
Uh, you can say hi, but you can't hear anything, right? Here, hold on. I'll swap it over. Just say. Here you go. Hi. Hi, Quinn. <laughs> I'm having <laughs> fun, and I just watched Daddy's call in the house for a little. And that's that's what he told little. me. <laughs> yep. That's very helpful. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> I think I'll owe him some more money or something. I don't know. You'll owe him money? I, I don't know. I feel like normally other people pay you to wash their cars. <laughs> but don't tell him I said that. <laughs> I will not. Okay. Because I don't come down from the virus. You're the only, you're daddy's friend. Not my yep. friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now I'm going to give daddy back his back. Okay. Okay, bye. All right. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you <God. laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> you're daddy's friend. Yeah. Not my friend. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I mean, it's true. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm dying. <laughs> No, you can't. Yeah, you can't hold on to that. Otherwise, it'll make a lot of bumps and clicks. Okay. All right. Okay. So we got to be quiet then. Uh, Daddy's going to record this cold open with Amelia, uh, and then we'll be all set. Okay. Are we all set? I'm ready. Well, I guess let's see how this goes. Uh, I'll give us a countdown. Okay. Go. I got a ball and mint, but oh, you can't eat that in here, buddy, because that's going to make a lot of noise. You can eat the mint. Here. Daddy. No. I can do it. Okay. <laughs> so many outtakes. I know. <laughs> That's oh what's boy. Going on. Okay. Two children. Right. One's a dog. <laughs> we. Um. If you head over to patreon.com slash dog at a door. <laughs> Stop it. It was a really fun micro RPG. Um, no. Hero dog annoys mom. <laughs> okay. There will even be some audience participation needed as someone needs to take on the role of the dog director of the game. That's really weird to think about. Hey. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Come here. Come here. Come here. Peggy. I swear, if you start again once I start talking. Can't read the outline and look at the dog, though. Like, if I stare her down, she doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, okay. <clears throat> There'll even be some audience participation needed since someone has to take on the role of the dog. <laughs> like, instantly. <laughs> oh, so Lord. It's fine. Okay. Now she's sitting here by me. Come here. <laughs> I want to say hi. Okay, don't. You can't be holding on to that, Quinn. Okay, well, say hi. But can I say hi? Yeah, you already did. But no. Well, you can say hi again if you want. Through yeah. the microphone, I mean. Yes, I'm talking into the microphone. Me, I want to. You're talking Please. into the microphone, too. Okay. It just happens to be a little further away from you. Okay. The only difference you is you to can't go hear on me an back. Update with me tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And hi. That sounds super great, but I live far away. She says she lives far away. <laughs> yeah, but it sounds great. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've been asked out. You know. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, you know. Oh, God. <laughs> oh he's cracking me up. Today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Look at we did it. We, halfway we did halfway it. there. It only took us oh, ten and a half minutes. Halfway there. That's <laughs> <laughs> on ever. All right. Here we go. Uh wait for the, the crinkling wrapper to, to finish. It's okay, Maya's <laughs> whining because she lost her ball oh, under no. the bed. Oh no, <laughs> you lost half your bar. <laughs> I wish I could get another one. I know. Can well, I snack on some peanuts for now? I'll get you some peanuts. <laughs> no, no, I want. Yeah. Okay. Where was I? Reviews. Reviews. <laughs> the crinkling paper. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it's caught. 
<laughs> Quiet. I will get the ball okay, in a gotta, minute. You gotta stop laughing for now. Sorry. Thank you. If you would like to help us rectify this situation, you can leave us a rating or review on any of the sites. You can't be, you can't be, you're making too much noise. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to clean up the audio. It's just going to be a lot of peanuts everywhere. <laughs> peanut bumpies. Yeah, peanut bumpies. Okay. That was so funny. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. That was super funny that you he is feisty today. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Can you tell your friends that it would be peanuts everywhere if I kept doing that? It would just be peanuts everywhere if you kept doing it. It would be. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to just, I just got to finish this last paragraph, okay? We're so close. I did. I did. She thought it was hilarious. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Uh huh. <laughs> Hilarious. Yes, you are. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. 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 Did you know it was my turn to talk? Say. See, I can't wait to talk to you. <laughs> for now, thank you so much for joining us. We hope that you really enjoyed this episode and had as much fun as we did. This was a great time. My dog is making noise in the background. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Can you do you sit nice for a minute? Okay, cool. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we hope you had as much fun as we did making this episode. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I just can't. Like, can we just like not put out an episode this week? Can we just like? I just think it's not meant to we've be. We've got we've got like one sentence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hey. When you need to quiet down, buddy. Okay. We did it. Oh my god! Oh. Just barely. <laughs> let's, let's stop these. Oh my god. Because uh, because you're like meek and trying to help the whole time until oh, language really hits the fan. Oh, excuse me. Until. Uh... <laughs> All right, so we can stop our recordings for now. Hey. I. Did it. Me too. Waveforms. Yeah, I've got really loud background today. Oh, well. Uh, that's fine. It's, I think the air conditioning is having to work extra hard. Um, it is so muggy. It's awful. It's just <laughs> awful. And like that's, that was what I was starting to say was that like we had those storms that knocked out the power. And then we mm -hmm. had storms that almost knocked out the power last night. It's supposed yeah. to storm today. And then it's supposed to like really storm tomorrow. Like as if this wasn't <laughs> yeah, all. Because all the other ones were practiced. Right. For this me. is just, you know, <laughs> I hate this part of summer in Wisconsin. Um, oh, it's so bad. I mean, it feels like it's a little bit later than usual because usually mm -hmm. it happens right around my mom's birthday at the end of July because she gets so angry. And it's like, I, I'm sorry, I can't do anything about mm -hmm. it. Like, I can't make it not be flash floods on your birthday. I'm sorry. Yeah, that was that was like um, Olivia's first birthday party uh, was interrupted oh, by a tornado. Right, I forgot about uh, that. Tear, tearing down the structure that we had rented out. Yeah, at the park. Yeah, <laughs> that we didn't get to. Uh, so that was fun. Yeah, I mean, it's just this part of summer in Wisconsin is terrible. So it's weird. Yeah, my phone weird. says. Um, oops. Ugh. <laughs> But, go away. It like won't <laughs> stop playing on. the video until I tell it that I like the weather app. And it's like, I don't like it right now. Oh, oh my God. Yeah, seriously. Um, anyway. Yeah, it's we have flash flood warnings right now, too. So. Oh, gross. I know. I'm just really, I'm just really over weather, Ryan. Yeah. Well, I had gotten, um, I had gotten on the ellipt, or not the elliptical, the exercise bike for the first time since we got in it. Mm -hmm. Um, like, uh. Uh, Ashley had been using it prior to that 
And I don't know how she existed on the seat that came with the bike. Yeah. But it is the worst, like, um, bottom-destroying seat in existence. <laughs> You're um, like, this is actively made to discourage use. <laughs> it really is. Like, I don't, I don't understand. Uh, so I had to buy a new seat because mm-hmm. uh, I used it for two days, and I was like, this is enough. So the first, ha- first day I used the regular seat, it was garbage. Then I swapped it out for a bike seat, a spare bike seat that we had in the garage. Uh-huh. And I realized why it's a spare bike seat, because it's also garbage. Gotcha. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that prompted me to buy a new bike seat. Mm-hmm. So that arrived today. And before we went cycling um, uh, through the parks and whatnot uh, in this heat and humidity, mm-hmm. I went out to get the bike seat. And like that five seconds out the door was like, uh, this is probably a bad idea, but... Whatever. Yeah, I just took the dog out and I went, oh, hell, like as I'm walking out the door, oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's no. like, sorry, dog, we're, um, we're staying inside today. Uh, I don't think I, I don't think I stopped my, um, cycling app. It still thinks I'm cycling. Um, finish. There we go. Yeah, we went, uh, six and a half miles for 41 minutes. Oh, gosh. In this, in this god awful heat. And now you're going to take like six showers, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Oh my god! I, I I would have totally I understood if you had been like, "Look, I was outside. <laughs> I was outside. I need to like I don't think go I'm... be a person for a minute." <laughs> it's nice and cool in the studio to begin with, but I have a feeling it's going to be uh, ramping up the temperature yeah. fast yeah. because of my extreme body heat right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's uh, it's it's a fun one out there, yeah. Wisconsin. Uh, not even once. <laughs> It's terrible because, like, it's like this, but then, you know, it has the other extreme, too. So, it's like I have friends in Florida that are like, can you believe what the humidity and the heat are today? And, like, it's just so muggy. And I'm like, okay, it's about the same here. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, except that in the winter, it'll be negative 20 and, you know, four feet of snow. But that's fine. (laughs) That's fine. You know, like, you wonder why I have so many clothes in my closet. It's like, well... (laughs) These mm-hmm. are for this half of the year, and these are for the other half of the year because you can't wear them all at the same yeah. time. Like, uh. yeah, we we have to get those uh, vacuum seal bags, yeah. and then seal up the winter clothes during summer, and then seal up the summer clothes during winter. And yeah, my uh, sister like fully away. swaps out her closet yeah, for the season, and like I don't do that. They all are just, but it makes my closet, of course, then look very full. Because yeah. I just have a ton of, but it's like, okay, this whole half is sweaters. So <laughs> anyway. Mm. Well, shall we record a cold open? Yeah, let me let me take a swig of this great uh, Wisconsin oh. root beer product that I am Ooh, drinking. delicious. Yeah, this little Sprecker. So it's an ad Sprecher. for Sprecker. It's delicious. Sprecker, the delicious root beer in a bottle. Now it also comes in cans. What? I know. Blaspheme. Mind blown. I can't. I would no, not. I can't. I would not. No. Never. No. Never. If you get a Sprecher, it comes in a bottle or nothing. No. Uh, well, if you go to the Sprecher re- restaurant, you can get it on tap. Um, I guess that's fair. But, yeah, no. But that comes in a glass then, right? Right, in a frosted glass. So if it doesn't come in glass. Right. You're right. Sprecher in a can. It in your face. Not even once. Yeah. No. Yeah. Just throw it, throw it at the people that give it to you. Right. Cream soda, though, this? also legit. Oh, yeah, I think it, I think the cans have like the Brewers logo and stuff on them, so they can serve them at the park. Oh, weird. Um, because I think they can't have glass bottles there, you know, because like that they serve sense. the beer like even in like plastic bottles at the park. Right, right. Um, well, because then uh, the glass would shatter, and well, and right, because angry would be fans liable. would like stab each other and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 sure, yeah sure, we don't sure, want sure. that. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't mean I need to participate. And let's just put it this way: there's a reason that I don't go to baseball games, and it's because they serve Sprecher in cans. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only reason or because we have a beer themed sports team and i don't know dealing with drunk people is not a thing that's very also true. i just don't really like baseball how about that cold <laughs> open <laughs> hot, takes hot takes on a hot day hot takes yep. <laughs> all right cold open time i can't see your fingers so yeah if uh, you want to do the countdown i'll start when you all right, do I'll it. do the countdown. I just, uh, I'm pretty sure everything looks fine enough. Yeah, close enough, I'm sure. <sighs> I don't have glasses on, so water. I can't see it anyway. Oh, okay. I've got kids running above my head. One second. 
Yeah, the neighbors stopped vacuuming like right before we sat down. So, oh, thanks, nice. neighbors. Thank you, neighbors. But now I can't see my dog, so she's probably eating something she shouldn't. Probably. We'll find out in like an hour or two. Yeah, find out next week. <laughs> oh, there she is. <laughs> it, whatever she was eating Come is here, biting back. Puppy. No. Okay, that's cool too. You do you. All right. Hey. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> We're just about to start yep. picking. What are you doing? Okay, we're doing a five count, okay? Shh, doing five count. All right, five count, silence. We also love talking about the show with people, so feel free to uh, listen to my dog in the background. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come in. E. Waveforms. Everybody's quiet. It's a little bit bumpy, but it's okay. It's fine. As long as it's just background bumpies, it's fine. It's not any worse than the fan. Yeah. So it should be fine. Mm hmm. All as right. we uh, established last series, background noise is background bumpies. Mm hmm. Good. Uh, which, of course, makes your voices the opposite of background bumpies. Oh, because we're low? It'd be foreground bumpies. It just bothers me, Ryan. It doesn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> foreground smoothies maybe it would help if uh, i spoke in a high falsetto and john kept his normal deep tone it would probably not help it would make it impossible to clean uh-huh just but how else me. will you guys find out how i feel about a thing called love <laughs> i guess we'll never know no yeah all right ryan looks like you're looks like i'm starting again how mm -hmm. did i get both first starting i don't know because you did it wrong i you're probably right <laughs> that's okay you want us to start instead? I can do that. <laughs> I'll just uh, I'll do another countdown. Uh, five seconds of background noise, and then uh, and then we'll get going. Here we go. All right, we can uh, stop this one too. Hey. I did it. Clickied. Oh, that was a very weird waveform there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fine. Everything's fine. It's all fine. Everything's great. All. It's great. It's fine. So we took my mom to that house. Yeah. Um, it's gorgeous. It's, it's right next to the highway, but there's a oh, big... Oh, is this the one you went to the other, uh, the other on day? On Friday, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, it's it feels even better going mm -hmm. back again. So I don't know. I, we're, we're definitely putting an offer in on it, so hopefully our offer is going to be good enough. Yeah. Um, But I think we're going to have to go like 15K above their asking price. God. Which is just so gross. I, that, you know, like, honestly, that's, it, I'm not going to say it's the only reason why part of it was because I'm like three freaking weeks. Um, uh -huh. But like, you know, my dad was like, you should buy a condo and you should. And I'm like, okay, first of all, there's no time to like look around. I'm not going to just buy something to buy something. And I'm like, secondly, like my first home, I'm not going to overpay uh -huh. because like I will never get that investment back. Like I'll never, mm -mm. you know. Well, unless it keeps growing. Hey. Right. But <laughs> it won't because it's a bubble. This bubble's gonna burst someday. It will eventually, oh, and you know, like I'm not positive that, like, you. Know, I think it's one thing if you're like, this is for sure where I want to be and where I want to stay, and like, you, you know, yeah. Um, I feel like you're a little more. Yeah, because we're we're, we're like, well, we're gonna be here at least five years, right? And maybe maybe ten, maybe twenty. Uh, and and eventually we might we might move somewhere else, right? Right. But uh, it doesn't get us closer to the school at all, which is annoying. Yeah. But uh, it's it's in a better neighborhood. Um, I want to say a quieter neighborhood aside from the uh, the highway noise behind the yeah. house. Yeah. So we'll And see. you said that like you can't hear much from inside at least. No. Once When you're in the house, you get nothing from the highway. So yeah. Uh, aside from like the occasional big truck barreling down the highway or whatever, you get a little bit of the rumble. But yeah. Um, once you get back into that, that room that I would turn into a studio, mm -hmm. uh, slash office, uh, it's dead quiet in there. Like, which is probably why they have that room because it's a sunroom. So it's like almost a patio. Yeah. Like to relax in, you know, it's so nice. Like I can, I can easily picture myself just enjoying being on the computer out there. So, ah, house buying. So if if our offer does get accepted, then we have to get this house on the market within a week, and then we're good. Ugh. Because then, uh, I mean, that's going to be the the hard part. 
But, but you've been one, like kind of slowly getting it ready. Yeah, we, we've been getting a lot of it ready, and and so it's like, okay, now we got to move all these boxes out of the house, store them at one of my family members' houses, and then uh, and then pack up more and move all that stuff out, and then we'll be fine for a bit. I don't know what to do about. Um, I never started this thing. I don't know. I don't know what to do about all my like. They say don't put personal stuff up, but I've got character art for my characters and like should i just keep that here I don't know yeah i don't understand that because they're like don't put personal stuff up because they want people to like imagine themselves yeah being in there or something but it's like i don't want to walk into a house and feel like like there's nothing there re- like there's no personality to it yeah i don't know maybe that's like harder to imagine yourself in somebody else's space or like, yeah which i kind of understand but it's like yeah. I don't know. I feel like there's a happy medium there between like, you know, showroom furniture yeah. and like. I do have to keep the studio up, though, because there's no way I'm tearing this down until I have to. Yeah. I mean, I think the hard part, though, is that like that's not what that room actually is. Uh huh. It's a sauna. It's a sauna, I which swear. actually like might be a really nice selling point for some people. Oh, it would be, it would be, it's a very nice sauna. We just saw a house with a sauna. That house was going for like three fifteen or something stupid like that. Right. And so it's like if you clean it out, like that probably will help. Yeah. Um. I don't think I need to clean it out. Clean. I think I can get rid of some of these blankets. Yeah. Um, and then move some of the pictures around and stuff, and then and then that should be fine enough. Uh, because you get a good sense of like the size of this when you just open the door. Yeah. Um, and like this is like three times the size of the sauna we just saw. Yeah. Um, at a house that was like fifty percent more expensive than this house is. Yeah. So, I don't know. Ugh. I don't yeah, know that. fun. I, ugh, I, I'm not looking forward to selling a house. No, I'm but apparently they just, just go garbage. fast. Yeah. They just go fast now. Yep. We went to the open house. It was in one hour open house. I swear there was at least 20 families that came to see it while we were there. Well, that was my question is like, what do you mean you like haven't put in the offer yet? Like you're not going to get that well, house if you don't put in the offer like today. They they're not they're out of town until tomorrow night. Oh. So the owners will not even see anything until Monday evening. Mm. So otherwise the offer would have been in already. Gotcha. Um But yeah, our, our real estate agents are going to be looking at it and, and saying, hey, uh, here's what the comparable houses in the area are. And yeah, uh, here's what we think the offer should be. And I'm like, oh, good Lord. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It'll be fun. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Crossing my fingers. It's a very nice house. Yeah, well, if you need me to, like, do a series or something while you're, you know. Moving. Moving and everything, let me know. Because yeah, I know I was next... thinking about that, too, and I was like, if you buy this house, like, you have to move out of your studio and, like, I know. set everything up. And, like, you, you know, it's just, like. Well, setting, setting up, up the my... studio is going to be the first thing I do anyway, so. You, you think the, that. After the, after the bedroom. Right, but, like, you know, it's like, okay, <laughs> my kids want their stuff, and, you know, uh-huh. like. It's like, I'll get to that, but like. We'll see. Yeah. Anyway. I I, I think we'll tear down the studio last, right? Yeah. And that'll be the first thing that gets set up because it'll be last in, first out, right? That's how stacking works. Uh, I mean, yeah. (laughs) I mean, yes, like last out of the house, first into the new house, but that doesn't mean Uh like first unpacked and set up. I know. I get that. Um, I have to work, though. Blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I'm just saying. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll we'll see what we have to do. Um, Quiet. I think the next one we have to record is uh, October, right? Yeah, we gotta figure it out. Mm, I want to learn about Casola. Yeah, just like that. <laughs> All right, should we record a cold open? Uh, we should, probably. All right. Okay, do you want to give me the five count and then I'll start since you can't I think I'm me. starting. Am I? Oh, I'm no. on the round one. Holy crap. Um. Well. No, I'm not. I didn't. I you didn't rename three. them, did you, right? I did not. No, they're at the bottom. Okay. Oh, you are starting. Okay. So I was looking at the wrong ones, too. Okay. There we go. I was looking at the right ones, but I was freaking out because they were labeled the wrong ones. Gotcha. Just throw okay. it off. Um, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right, here we go. In 
sign up for the <gasps> fuck? Hey, excuse you. <laughs> Doing it in here. God. So free. F- All right. Call to action. All right. Oh, 18 mm. minutes this time. 